Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Several people sent me this story, and it's about a trial that's going on right now in Florida. And I have not been talking about the trial, and I don't think I've even mentioned the case on my channel. But defense lawyers in the Parkland shooting case unexpectedly rested, sparking a heated exchange with the judge. And Thomas and Darren both asked me, I said, Steve, is this something that makes sense? And interestingly, it does. And I'll explain that to you in a second. But I taught trial practice for 10 years at a law school, and I've tried cases. And so this is the kind of thing, when I see it, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand what's going on here. But I also understand why people who are not really familiar with the legal system might go, really? Why is, why is that such a big deal? So attorneys for the Florida school shooter suddenly and surprisingly rested their case Wednesday, leading to a heated exchange after the judge accused them of a lack of professionalism. Defense attorneys had told the judge and the prosecutors they would be calling 80 witnesses, 8-0, 80 witnesses. But they rested Wednesday morning after calling only 25. There were 11 days of defense testimony overall with the last two spotlighting experts, okay? And I'm not going to get into what's the testimony about by these various people. What's important here is that this is a trial where this man has pleaded guilty. So he's pleaded guilty. This is not about whether he's guilty or not. They're having a trial simply on what the sentence is going to be. So in Florida, you can get the death penalty, you can get life in prison, and the question is, which will he get? So the defense had said, we have 80 witnesses, 8-0. And when you're in a trial of any sort that involves witnesses, a court can ask you to provide the court and the other side a witness list. Witness lists often get exchanged very, very early in civil litigation. I do them all the time. So we're filing a lawsuit on a Lemon Law claim, and I got to file a witness list. It's going to be my client. Uh, might be members of their family, uh, might be mechanics who've worked on the car. And you, you lay these witnesses out and you say, here's all the witnesses we're going to call. Other side sends you one. Here's all the witnesses we're going to call. And so in this case, the defense had said, we're going to call 80 witnesses, 80. And one of the reasons that they do this is that this allows you to prepare for trial, but it also allows the court to schedule things. So if a court asks you, how long is the trial going to take? One side says, we're going to take two days, Your Honor. Next side says, we're going to take two days, Your Honor. The judge has got to book out four days that are going to be occupied by this trial. And if the trial ends early, great, hallelujah, time off. However, if the trial runs long, now suddenly you're interfering with other things and the courts have to try to schedule things to make them work because most courts have got so much stuff on their dockets that they can't fit it all in. And so it's a matter of juggling these things and trying to make them work. So the sudden announcement by the lead defense attorney led to a heated exchange between her and the judge who called the decision without warning uh, the most uncalled for, unprofessional way to try a case. So the judge is basically saying, look, if you're only going to call 25 you tell us you're going to call 25 witnesses. Because when you get to the end of your case and you rest, the other side then gets to do the rebuttal if there is one and so on. And so they have to plan theirs. And now I know many people are going to say, Steve, if I'm on trial, it's not my job to tell you how to prepare. Well, here's the thing. There are jurors and there are witnesses who've got to come to court. So the jurors come to court every single day that they think they're going to hear testimony. And the court will tell them, you guys need to be here tomorrow. Or if there's no testimony tomorrow, they'll say, you don't need to be here tomorrow. The jurors can take a day off. So with the defense resting suddenly in the morning, why didn't they rest the evening before? So the judge could have told the jury, don't come in tomorrow. It's a day off. The jury had already come in. That's one of the problems. Second problem is, when they rest and the other side's going to put in their rebuttal, presumably they're going to call a witness. Is their witness there? Well, no. They didn't tell their witness to show up today because there were 55 more witnesses coming, supposedly. So are you ready? Can you call a witness? No. Why not? 
We told them they wouldn't be called for two or three more weeks. And that was a reasonable thing to say because they said they had 80 witnesses. So the 12 member jury and the 10 alternates, 22 jurors, were not present for that argument, but were outside the courtroom lining up, getting ready to come in. The sudden announcement also meant that prosecutors were not prepared to begin their rebuttal. And I know people say, Steve, if they're not prepared, that's their fault. No, they're prepared, but their witnesses are who they need. And you do not drag your witnesses in early because sometimes witnesses are sequestered, for instance, meaning they're not even in the courtroom. They got to sit in the hallway until they're called. So if you have a witness that you're going to bring into court, you try to schedule it to where it's, oh, the day I need you, you'll be there. The day before, no. Two days later, no. We'll get them the day we need them. So it's the day you need them that matters. So the prosecutor threw up his hands and the judge asked him if he could begin. And he said, no. He said, we're waiting for 40 more witnesses, referring to the defense. So there is some debate about how many witnesses were called because one part of the story says about 25. Um, one says they had said they were called 80 total, but he says we're waiting for 40 more. Uh, he may have been just guesstimating there. Uh, the judge then accused the defense attorneys of being inconsiderate to all involved, but especially to jurors for wasting their trip to court because all the jurors were told, no testimony today, go home. To have 22 people march into court and be waiting as if it is some kind of game. I've never experienced such a level of unprofessionalism in my career, the judge said. Then the defense attorney countered, you are insulting me on the record in front of my client. The judge then told her to stop. And the judge then laid into her with whom she has had a testy relationship since pretrial hearings began three years ago. So three years ago, this trial started on some level. This whole legal process started. And at one point in time, they said they had 80 witnesses. They put in 25 and then they rested. So... The judge then said, you've been insulting me the entire trial, blatantly taking your headphones off, arguing with me, storming out, coming late intentionally if you don't like my ruling. So quite frankly, this has been long overdue, so please be seated. So that's the judge saying what she thinks of the defense lawyer. And again, I've not watched this trial, so I have no idea who's right in that exchange. And by the way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What we're talking about here is the judge saying to an attorney, it was unprofessional of you to walk in today and say, we're done. We're done. And I know, again, some of you are going to say, Steve, seriously, is it that big of a deal? How much you want to bet that the defense attorney at the close of proofs the day before called up their other witnesses and said, don't need any of you. Don't need any of you. And so if you tell a witness you don't need them, and you were planning on bringing them into court the next day, and the result of which is you don't need to put in anybody the next day, you should notify the court clerk and say, we just told all our witnesses to not bother. We're calling no more witnesses. Sorry it's such late notice, but we just made the decision. But if they had made the decision the day before, they could have notified the court. The court could have notified the jurors. That's it. And so it's a matter of, of, of simple courtesy in that respect. So... Like we said before, the man here did plead guilty uh, in this case, uh, and the event happened back in 2018. His trial, which is in its second month, is simply to determine the sentence. And he could get death or he could get life without parole because it's Florida. Uh, so that's the situation. But as far as this goes, uh, this is the kind of thing that I would expect a judge to be upset by. And it simply goes to the matter of trying to help everyone manage their time. So the court has to manage its docket. The defense attorney has got to manage her witnesses in the presentation of her case. And the prosecution, while that's going on, is preparing how they're going to counter that. And so the prosecution might not even have figured out which witness they would call first on rebuttal because they wanted to see what type of a case came in through those 80 witnesses. And now that they know they only have to deal with the first 25 witnesses, that might radically change 
how many witnesses they call, who they call, and in what order. And by the way, that is an important thing. A lot of people think, oh, you have a trial, you got five witnesses, just call them. One, two, three, four, five. No, 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 no. You put a lot of thought in a presentation and a trial. And so it's extremely important who your first witness is and who your last witness is. Those are the two most important. Uh, they've done studies on this, and it's absolutely true. There's a concept of primacy and recency. Primacy is what you did first. Recency is what you did most recently, which is last. And those are things people remember. So if you're going to get up in front of somebody and tell them a story, you start with a bang, you end with a bang. And the stuff in the middle supports the bookends. Seriously, that's basically it. So this was inappropriate for the attorney. And if the attorney had said something in defense of this, I'd be interested to hear it. And now you could say, Steve, she started to say something, but she got cut off by the judge. But she actually said, you are insulting me on the record in front of my client. When she could have said, Your Honor, may I explain? Because one of the things I like to point out to people is that if you offer to explain something and someone cuts you off, well, you offered to explain it to them. And so there is actually a legal equivalent of that. And let's suppose, I'm, I'm making a hypothetical here just to prove a point about how you can offer to present something and have it affect something later on. Let's suppose you're in trial and you say, Your Honor, I'm going to call my next witness. Judge goes, who's the witness? You say, and the judge goes, I'm not going to let that person testify. And you go, why not? And other side objects and goes, Your Honor, the reason you don't want that person to testify is blah, 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 blah. They have nothing to do with the case. Don't let them in here. Don't let them testify. And the judge goes, I agree with your opposition here that that witness should not be allowed to testify because they've got nothing relevant to say in this case. Relevance being the key. And you say, Your Honor, may I do an offer of proof? And an offer of proof is where the court asks you to prove or show what you're going to introduce into evidence if allowed to do so. So there's two ways of doing it. One of which is for the attorney to simply state on the record, if you let me bring this person in to testify, they're going to testify this, 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 and this. And the judge says, not going to let it happen, move on. It's now on the record that my witness would have testified to this, 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 and this. And if the case goes up on appeal, I can say, I had a witness who's going to testify to this, 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 and this. The judge wouldn't let him testify. And now the court on appeal has got to look at what I said they'd testify to and go, wait a second, that might have changed the case. But a full-blown offer of proof is where you say, Your Honor, can I bring them in and let them testify without the jury present so you can hear how they'll testify? And if the judge says no, well, again, on appeal, I'm going to say, you know what this person could have testified to? This, 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 and this. Court on appeal is going to go, well, if that person testified, would that have made a big difference in the trial? If so, I might get a new trial. So you always offer to put into evidence the evidence that you want to get in, even if the judge shoots it down or the other side objects, you make sure the record reflects what you could have said or what you would have said. So if I was the defense attorney in this case and the judge cut me off, and said, you're unprofessional for what you just did there, Mr. Leto. I'd say, Your Honor, may I explain? And if the judge says, no, you may not, I sit down. I actually look better there than if I'd explained. So that's my issue here, is the attorney responds with, you are insulting me on the record in front of my client. So she's complaining about how she's being treated, but she's not offering an explanation, nor is she offering to offer an explanation. So the judge, whether or not she went off a little bit too harshly on the party here, I don't, I don't know. I haven't watched enough of the trial to understand that or to know, but it does make sense to me that if a party said, we've got 80 witnesses, weeks and weeks and weeks of testimony, and then one third of the way in said, we're done. That would cause problems. And so now, these people, other side, who said we have witnesses that they would keep in touch with, say, by the way, we're two weeks out, we're three weeks out, however far out we are from your testimony, have got to call the witness and go, can you come in next week? Can you come in early? And some witnesses might go, no, I can't. I, I, I booked my stuff around you. 
I, I booked my calendar around you. Could be on vacation that week, you know. So that's what's going on here. But it's an interesting story. We'll see what happens. Defense lawyers in the Parkland school shooting trial unexpectedly rest their case, sparking a heated exchange with the judge. Thomas and Darren both sent a thanks a lot, guys. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Small deeds done are better than great deeds planned.